So let me welcome Pratham Kamat, who is here to start this podcast. Welcome, Pratham. Pratham D. Pratham D. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Physics or biology? Physics. Ah, oh, fantastic. <laughs> Take a step forward and go ahead and. <laughs> are you a tea person or are you a coffee person? Coffee. Coffee person. Welcome to the CFL's Achievers Podcast, a podcast which brings you inspiring journeys, success stories, and tips to crack the toughest exams in the country, J and NEET. So let me welcome Pratham D, our J Advance Achiever from CFL. Welcome, Pratham. Thank you, sir. Hello, I am Pratham D from CFL. I scored a rank of uh, 2,632 in J Advance. And I have also uh, secured 99.62 percentile in J means. So, first of all, congratulations to you, Thank you sir. Pratham. Uh, and I, I, we got to know that you have been seated at IIT Madras. Yes. So, congratulations on that Thank as you, well. Sir. CFL, everybody at CFL is very proud of your achievement. Uh, let me just uh, be very casual about this conversation. So, just ask, to ask you, run us through the journey of writing the JE advanced exams for that matter. What was the thought process and how did you approach this exam? So initially, uh, we had to attend classes and then we were taught the basic concepts. Right. They tried to build the concepts and then once you reached a certain level, they started giving you good questions, like questions that uh, t- uh, try to bug you for the rest of the week and make right. sure uh, you put some time into them and then solve them. Right. So they, they ensured that our concepts were strong. True. Cool. After all that, uh, uh, we had to write J mains mocks and then write, give J mains. Once you clear J mains, J advanced mocks starts. Okay. Then some classes for the topics which are not covered in the syllabus of J mains. Right. right. And then finally, it all culminates to the J advanced exam. Fair enough. So, what is your biggest moment at CFL during your preparation? Uh, let's say from your J mains till advance till you finish your exams. What is the biggest moment? Uh, for you at CFL while this preparation was going on? So, uh, just like three weeks before both JE mains and advanced, I always uh, uh, feel the pressure to do well in the exam okay. and then that affects my mocks. There is always a cons- consistent dip in the performance. Okay, okay. Uh, but then I have to get back and try to improve my marks. So, the fear of not making it through the exam is always the problem. Right. When it comes to these competitive exams. So, okay. we should always be very confident. Confident about it. Okay. So, the few weeks before the exam is the most crucial part. True. And I would say those were one of the biggest moments in moments. the preparation. Okay. okay, Wonderful. Now, which chapter or let's say a particular topic. Now, there is, you can't have uh, liking towards all the topics that you go through. So, which was the topic or chapter that actually terrified you? Like you're saying, like, if I, I don't know how to go about this, this particular topic. Which is the one that actually... So, it, this might be a bit counterintuitive, but I didn't uh, I didn't like the first few chapters, like Newton's laws and all those okay. topics, because it felt a lot more calculative. You had to just apply the same routine uh, method, right. and then it was too tedious and long, and I was always terrified whenever I got a question from first year mechanics part. Okay, perfect. So, walk us through your uh, daily study routine. Like, let's say, beginning from your uh, first step where you enter CFL or before that, till you leave, what's your study routine like? Like, preparing for exams, mock tests, anything for that matter. So, I have been a part of CFL Foundation. So, uh, earlier when I was not in CFL College, I was in school. Right. Uh, We had to uh, go to CFL classes every uh, Sunday and Saturday. Okay. And uh, attend two hours of classes or three hours of classes something okay. so and that was on the weekend back. weekend, yeah, batch weekend batch. Batch. Okay. okay so they used to teach us concepts it was just to uh, like uh, uh, ensure that our curiosity is fed with the right amount of concepts right and then it kept my mind always engaged with all concepts and topics okay uh, since uh, joining cfl puc in the first year i i admit that i have wasted a lot of time and, okay like I have done a lot of extracurricular stuff. Right. So there was not good performance in the first year. First but then okay. Okay. in second year, I started uh, uh, trying to improve my scores and okay. started actively like spending an hour a day or 
two hours a day trying to look at my notes okay because i pride myself with the notes and then i don't look at them so there was no point in making good notes true true Fair so right. you have to always go through your notes when right. you are uh, preparing for je not just making neat notes correct correct okay so describe a low point now whenever you're going through tests you will definitely go through a low point where you do not know you're just clueless as to how to even approach this let's say uh, mock test mock test disaster burnout or you're just completely low what was the low point and how did you even tackle this point like most of the mock tests that happened in december and the later mock tests after mains one they were uh, uh, like really good mock tests and i used to score like below average or i i couldn't reach my expectations okay so i i was like feeling really stressed out about it and then i felt really bad giving mocks because every time i clicked on the start button e- even at home it right. felt like i'm losing a mock to a very bad uh, day so okay. i okay. shouldn't be giving mocks that that was my thought but okay. then i realized like these are mocks I, there are plenty of them so it's good True. if i just try to overcome this fear of giving mocks and then uh, try giving more mocks okay so after that there was some improvement and i i was not scared of giving mocks or giving the actual right. test so it's very important that you don't have a fear of uh, getting low marks in mocks don't be like uh, what my friends will think about me and all that like uh, in the end what matters is that you are not afraid of the final exam and you are able to give your best in the final exam right very well said actually because uh, th- there is there is this kind of feeling when you are writing mocks as to students start comparing their marks with their friends and everything so very well said not to just think about the other person and just focus on yourself and probably uh, work for the better uh, result there fantastic um one resource from uh, cfl mentors or mock series or anyone at cfl that actually gave you an edge saying that okay maybe someone passing by or just having a conversation with you and it just gave you an edge saying that oh actually i didn't think uh, in this manner uh, anyone at cfl that might have actually given you that edge yeah i think my mentor has played a crucial role like I, especially before j advance okay. i felt like i will not go th- and do well in j advance okay. i was like it's not possible i won't be able to clear j advance i won't get the seat i want right but then uh, i did talk to my mentor about uh, all this and then uh, he was very kind enough to like encourage me uh, he is also a chemistry teacher so he, there were a few topics in chemistry that we were weak in okay he was taking classes till the last minute to ensure the concepts were right, really right. strong okay and then so most of the scoring topics like inorganic chemistry and uh, uh, even organic chemistry we were able to cover most of the topics and right. uh, do a pretty good job in the final exam without uh, probably uh, his help i don't think it would be possible would to have the j advance fair enough now i have a very interesting question for you now you might have had uh, heard from a lot more people experienced people non experienced people in this field uh, about a certain myth about j or neat for that matter which you actually went through and discovered that it was false is there any kind of myth that you might have heard from someone when you after you went through this journey you discovered oh this is false i don't know what they were actually speaking about is there anything that you would like to share like they say that uh, like once you spend 2 years practicing problems and then just doing pyqs you will be able to clear j okay. mains and advanced but i would stress on concepts in the initial phase of studying for j mains and advanced and then start doing problems like before the exams like one or two months before the exams okay. get good books and then solve from them but uh, nowadays there are really good online services also like uh, even uh, cfl workbooks are really good in some topics okay. there are uh, there are online services which uh, sell you courses for uh, which sell you pyq question banks so nowadays there is not much of a need to get pyq books like how right. students recommend you to do that do that yeah. yeah so it's very important you get a good book which strengthens your concepts right, right. Uh, else someone will take like for example 4 minutes to solve a problem, problem and you will be able to do it within like 2 uh, minutes 2 minutes right Right, so right. some j advanced questions are uh, designed in a way that uh, if you are strong with the concepts you will not end up making the common mistakes right 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 fantastic okay now uh, 
when we had a conversation, I think you told me that in the first year you were completely involved in extracurricular activities. So let's say apart from academics, what is a habit or a hobby that you would actually keep you sharp or probably keep you on your edge, on your toes? Uh, what kind of hobbies or habit do you have outside of academics? Uh, so I play chess. Like, okay. I'm not a pro player, but I do enjoy playing chess on chess.com and mm. other sites. Oh, fantastic. So, okay. Uh, I'm also into building RC planes and other oh, stuff okay, okay. and 3D printing and all 3D that. Printing. Okay. So there is a makerspace at CFL and right. we were uh, actively involved sometimes in, during makerspace and all that, okay. Okay. trying to make the arrangements and build the projects for different departments. Right. So it was really fun in first year and okay. then second year we didn't get so many opportunities because you have J mains exams and within a month after uh, makerspace. Right, right. Good, good that you actually explored when you had that chance in the first year. I'm sure, uh -huh, I'm hundred percent sure that academics also comes in its place, in its place. But with that, I think you should actually give a bit of time. Yeah. Probably when you said RC, I'm like, okay, this is something. Usually, when you ask of hobbies, uh, students here to tend to tell chess, music, dance, and everything. But you had chess as well as something that was yeah. uh, very interesting to actually explore. Wonderful. Um, okay. My last question to you. My last question. Um, now let's say I give you 30 more days, I j you have just one more month, okay? And you have to double down on the concepts that you've learned and you have to prepare for GE Advance. What would be your process? What, how would you actually explore this? You have just 30 days and now you in 30 days you have GE Advance. How would you double down the whole process? Like 30 days is not enough for GE Advance. It's possible, but uh, like once you lose touch with the topics, it's right. very hard to... Um, prepare within 30 days but I would uh, try to uh, maximize uh, my effort in uh, topics which are like easy to score in like in organic chemistry is very easy to score in okay. and in math there are a few topics which are easy to score in like uh, vectors and all that so those are topics where the questions are usually easy or they don't try to do many complicated uh, constructions in those topics okay. and physics I would uh, uh, do the theory chapters and also like I like the second year topics more than the first year topics. Right. So my priority would be more towards the second year topics okay, okay. because they are uh, most some of them are theory based and some of them are uh, like complicated for other students. Other but students then easier for you have time. an edge in those topics where others True. True. think that it's not easy. So then mocks mocks will always help me okay. and then. Using PYQs and other uh, books yeah. will usually help. Why, why I ask you this question is now people, uh, students or rather, who would be watching this video and have gone through a journey probably and then are just have that 30 days and they don't, don't know what to do. Probably this could be a tip uh, as to how to actually yeah. go through that. Uh, you said you have been in the foundation uh, oh, classes yes. at CFL. Uh, how much of an impact did it have in your GE advanced mains or in your POC life for that matter? That uh, And what would you like to tell the viewers here, students uh, majorly, uh, how foundation helps, not just at CFL, I'm just saying, in general, in how general, does yeah. foundation actually help in their uh, coming journey in 11th and 12th? So, there is something called Olympiads, which, uh, uh, which school children can write. I think it's from 8th or 9th standard. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you, it's really good if you are introduced to such competitions from an early on stage. Like uh, if you are practicing uh, math on a daily basis or physics or whichever subject you like, and if you can give the Olympiads, like just for practice, it, it gives you an idea of how was the subject is. Right. So uh, foundation actually introduced most of the subjects to me, like okay. physics and chemistry and math. It 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 was not like a one stop solution to uh, like cracking J mains or something. It it gradually uh, brings you up the ladder right, and then right. it helps you a lot. Okay. In case of uh, foundation classes, they they are engaging and uh, the tests and there are a lot of uh, extracurricular activities that they conduct also. Okay. There are like contests and all that. Okay. Foundation. Uh, okay. Yeah. How does it How does it actually help you with your 11th and 12th? Like let's say you're uh, just It gives you an level. edge when you enter PUC. That yeah. is like, it always helps you. It, it, if you are a 
fresh student right entering second pc you would be afraid of the topics like when your teacher says some word or something like that okay. but if you are a foundation student you will have the basic idea of it and then you you just need to chill out and make sure you understand what the rest of the things the teacher things, is trying to make it's it, easily right? relatable when yeah, it is when it's you very take relatable. the foundation yeah okay fair enough uh thank you so much pratham uh, it's been pleasure talking to you and uh, once again uh, congratulations on your uh, seated iit madras you, again and uh, congratulations on your achievement in ge advance as well uh, let me ask you three quick rapid fire questions yeah. this is off academics i'm not going to ask you again anything academics just uh, off academics just like icebreaker yeah. and you just have to yeah, just three of them yeah um are you a tea person or are you a coffee person coffee coffee person fantastic are you a night owl or an early bird Night owl. Night owl. Fantastic. My last question: Physics or biology? Physics. Ah, oh, fantastic. <laughs> so that that was Pratham D, uh, one of our CFL achiever in GE Advance, and I hope his journey has inspired a lot more students and also the parents to take a step forward and enroll your children to the best that they have in JE and NEET. So thank you very much.